Hey everyone, Dave here for an exciting announcement. Apple just dropped their Final Cut camera app and it's actually been something in the making and I've been excited for it to drop because one, it's free and two, that means that it can now be used with a feature that I've been dying to get my hands on, which is live multicam recording using Final Cut for iPad. So I'm not gonna go into Final Cut for iPad today, we're just gonna check out the camera, but it's a rock and roll camera, I love it. Let's dive into it right now. Okay, so we're in my iPhone 15 Pro Max on my semi-clean uh, desk, and um, I just wanted to show you the features of it. Remember, once again, this is a free camera. And I showed you last week, or, or a few weeks ago, the uh, Black Magic camera app, which I think is still great and it's free as well. But what I like about this is that it's much simpler, not as many bells and whistles. And also the fact, like I said, that it's going to work as a multi cam app, a multi camera for when I want to shoot multiple angles. Maybe my students are going to put together interviews or think about movie scenes or whatever, and they can shoot all this. All they need to have is use one of the iPads that we have with a M chip running it and Final Cut Pro for iPad, of course, Final Cut for iPad it's called, but also they can just download this app on their own phones. They don't have to use my devices. They can all grab it on their own phones because it's free. And I think that is completely awesome. All right, so let's go through some features here. It's got uh, pretty basic features, but they do uh, shoot some really great footage. And I'll be showing you guys some footage uh, later on in another video when I take it out for a big spin. I'm actually, my brain's just going fast because I've actually done some multicam testing with it with Final Cut uh, for iPad and it works amazingly well. Like my God, where was this when I was making movies ages ago? All right, so let's go from top to left here and we're just gonna go through everything. As you can see right now, as I'm talking, you can see that there is audio coming into the phone, which is pretty nice. So we're going to get into that in a second. But on the left-hand side here, if I can click, let's go to the top here, sorry. I'm going to go to the top left here. I've got options to shoot in 24 frames per second, 25, which is PAL, 30 or 60 frames per second. So that's the first thing. Second thing is I can go into 4K, I can go 1080 and 720. So I've got options on that. Third is HDR. Now, one of the cool things about this is that I can switch back to Rec. 709. So we've been using a lot of uh, Premiere Pro in uh, our classrooms lately. And the students are always wondering why are my, I edit the video fine, but then when I export it, everything's kind of blown out. Every, the colors aren't the way that I made them. And that's because they shot on their phones using high dynamic range. So this gives you the opportunity to switch back to SDR Rec. 709, which without going into crazy tech term stuff, just makes your footage look normal. <laughs> so that's a great feature that I really like. And then down here, I can leave it in the new H.265 format, which is the new standard, or I can go into Apple ProRes. Now, if you look down on the bottom here, I've got 89 hours. Of, of space to use to film the uh, H.265. But if I switch it to ProRes, look at how it changes. Now we've gone down to two hours and 30 minutes. So it's very, it's a big file format. And so we might not want to use that, depending on what we're shooting, of course. So I'm going to go back to HGVC. And then down here's a little X, and I'm going to X out of this for a second. So there's all that stuff that it's easy to access it. You just press it once and it expands like that. And then you can go in there and make changes if you'd like. On the top left here, the little gear icon. Here we've got preferences. Once again, here's my codec. I can change it between ProRes and that. And I can change my format. We kind of saw all that earlier, so I'm not going to go into that too deep. Color and dynamic range, once again. So all the options that you want are here. You can also turn on stabilization your video will be more stable if you're going handheld. Uh, and then you can mirror the front camera, of course. There's also the options to go into help and support. And if I go into tools now, 
I've got a grid overlay, so I want to turn that on. Let's turn it on really quick. Let's go back. And now I've got my grid so that I can make sure that I'm using a rule of thirds to film with and have my stuff look really great. Um, aspect ratio guide, so I can click on that. Do I want off, so it's just normal? Do I want square, so maybe I'm filming my footage, which will be wide, but if I have square guide in there as well, it's going to show me what I can use uh, for Instagram and things like that, what will be in frame. So that's nice to have. Four by three, so four by three would be more if I was shooting a vertical video. So you can shoot vertically in this as well. If you turn it, everything just moves and you can film that as well. If we keep going down, there's an overexposure indicator. So let's turn that on and see what it looks like right now. I'll turn the overlay off and let's see if I'm overexposed. So I've got all these lights on right now because I've been in the pool and I am very dark. So I wanted a lot of light on me. But you can see by the red, it's really blowing out the images down here. So I would want to, if I was trying to light something, it's going to help me there to see what my best lighting situation is going to be, which is great for my students to understand this because it'll help them later on when they're shooting their videos. So, and then I've also got focus peaking, which if we're doing focus, it'll help me to decide where there's problems there or not. I can have that, such, that on as well. Audio. So as you can see right now, so I'm plugged into my Mac Studio doing this tutorial, so I can't plug in external audio, but you can certainly do that here. Right now it says this device, but if I had something plugged into the USB-C or your lightning adapter, you would see this as which as the microphone that you would want to pick. So it's great for using external microphones, which is a big upgrade because I remember early on when I started my company, Iographer, and I started just really diving into this. I was kind of driven to use other apps from the Apple camera because it wouldn't really allow you to capture audio from external microphones. It didn't, it didn't recognize them. And so finally Apple's gotten the point and, <laughs> and they fixed that here. Okay, now let's go to the right side here. Um, just really quickly in the middle, I see 120 millimeter, 24 millimeter and 13 millimeter. Those are going to be my uh, different lenses. So like if I go into the 13 millimeter, I'm super wide out. That's the normal one. Okay, we'll go back to regular one. On top of that, if I hit this little arrow, it gives me some options here. So if I click on that, I can lock my orientation on my phone. So I can leave it unlocked right now. It's unlocked. So if I turned it too much while I was filming, it might go vertical. So if I'm trying to push in and do some fun stuff with it, you know, maybe I want to lock it to left orientation, right orientation, or portrait mode. So it's got that option for you there. This is autofocus, so you can pull your own, you can leave it on auto, or you can start changing your focus and change your focal points like that. So it's manual focus. I'm going to switch that off now and go back to auto. So that's a good uh, option to have. This plus and minus lets me uh, do the exposure. So before on the Apple camera app, you would just hold it down and you'd see this little slider that would let you change the exposure a little bit. This is a lot more precise. It's got auto, but I can also start to change the exposure. Blow it out if I want or go way down if I want, depending on what I'm filming. I'm going to switch back to auto there. And then we'll go back and down here is, do I want to change the white balance or leave it on auto white balance if I just... Do I want to do it fixed, automatic? Is it daylight? Give me all these options. We've seen this in other apps, so this is a great thing if I'm outside shooting and it's cloudy. I might switch that over to something like that. You know, so you've got some great options. I'll leave that on automatic and let it automatically do that. For those that don't know, why is white balance important? Well, if you're going to do color correcting later, you want the colors to be the real colors and not something strange. And this white balance balances out all the whites so that you'll have pure whites, pure blacks, etc. Okay, so let's turn that off. Uh, up here, I can turn this around and there I am, hello. This is the start button to start filming and then down here is where I would find footage. And that's it. If we go to the left here really quickly, uh, that's my battery. That's how many hours, like I said, I have left. And here's the killer feature of the day. If I click on the far left icon, it says connect to live multicam. 
So now it's going to connect as that to my iPad. So that's my iPad Pro. I don't have it running right now. But if I did, my iPad Pro is now going to see this as one camera. So I can do up to four different angles in uh, doing multicam with uh, iPhones or iPads. So I can actually have this on an iPad as well. It, it works and it's great. So I can connect iPads and iPhones using this camera app to the iPad running Final Cut Studio and have four different angles. And I'll have another video tutorial very soon, um, this week sometime about that because I am just fired up on how that's gonna be such a great tool to use. So that's it and it just connects. You'll see it on the iPad Pro. You'll see that it'll say my iPhone. I can change this, click on it. Uh, if it was connected, I can change it, connect as camera A, camera B, whatever I want. So super excited about that. Um, but yeah, this is the Apple camera app. It's free. Um, I highly recommend checking it out. Right here, the little plus button I forgot to talk about is a zoom. So if I wanted to go zooming in and zooming out, I can do stuff like that. All right, so this is it, the Apple Final Cut camera. So check it out today. It's at the App Store. I'll put a link below. It's completely free. And we're going to start making some great projects with it. Way to go, Apple. I think you did a great job. Okay, I'm Dave Basulto. Thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button so you can always know about new videos coming. And the bell will announce to you when there are new videos coming. So I'd love to have you in part of my channel. Ask any questions you like and I'm here to answer them. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great weekend. Take care.